All right, so the main objectives of this practical is to, well, the idea is to download, visualize, and extract data. Now we're gonna try to visualize this uh, environmental space and also the geographic space that we were talking in the other sessions. But the main objectives today is to download and visualize environmental layers in quantum GIS. Uh, then we're gonna also download occurrence data, so species location using this global biodiversity information facility, an application that is already, uh, you can download from quantum GIS. And then we're gonna visualize this species occurrence in quantum GIS software. And then uh, those two first objectives is the first part of this uh, practical. And then we're gonna use uh, available information that is on the C file link. And then we're gonna use those data to extract environmental conditions from all the study area. In this case, we're gonna focus in South America. And also for one focal species, in this case, is the same tree that we were discussing in the, in the previous sessions, it's the Brazilian nut. And then also we're gonna plot the environmental conditions and map uh, the fundamental niche. So we're gonna visualize data both in the environmental space and in the geographic space. So that you remember where, which part of this modern processes, process we are now, um, uh, we're in the data preparation. So we're gonna focus on downloading both environmental predictors and species uh, data. And then we're gonna visualize this in quantum GIS. And also this, this graph, we're gonna, be in this part of the modeling procedure, where we're gonna visualize this data uh, of, of species and this environmental data in quantum GIS software. You can, again, find the, the slides of instructions in, on Moodle, is the PDF called MDA, MDM, SDM, sorry, four. And then to start with, uh, you have to go to this webpage, Chelsea Climate is one of these uh, sources of information that we discussed in the first uh, session. And then uh, once you go here, uh, there's, there's one, one place or one button, which is downloads. Once you click downloads, then you're gonna have a window similar to this one, where you could select data set, uh, a variable and precision you should go through a data set called climatologies. And then within uh, the types of variables, we're gonna download one uh, climatic variable of the whole world, which is the annual mean temperature. And then uh, it should be, sorry, it should be automatic, but uh, you should uh, see that it's called, it's an integer uh, value of this, this raster. And then all you need to do is click on download. It's 100 megabytes, it's not that, that, uh, that heavy, let's say, but, but it should be relatively fast to download. And then, um, then it's good that you have a folder, you create a folder with all your data. If you already downloaded also the materials from, from the other parts of the course, you can put everything in one folder so it's easy to, to, to tackle. Uh, initially, when I downloaded this data uh, from Chelsea, it was shipped. But I realized that now it, it's not zipped. So once you're gonna download this, it's gonna be just a, a normal uh, TIFF file in your, in your downloads. And from now uh, on, I'm just gonna uh, exit this presentation and I'm gonna open the Quantum GIS software and we're gonna work uh, from there. So once you're gonna open uh, the software, it, it might look uh, a little bit different than this because I have other settings, but the information that we're gonna use, the tools are gonna be there. So no, no worries if it looks a little bit different than yours. Um, so the, thing, the first thing we're gonna do after you opened the QGIS desktop software, uh, 
Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, the edition, I think it's 3.10 uh, version of the software. Uh, after that, uh, you're gonna add this layer that we just downloaded, all right? So we just downloaded this uh, average mean temperature from the world. It's a raster format. It's a type of format that is kind of like a photograph. So it's, it's composed of, of, of pixels and, each, and this, uh, this each pixel has a value. So we're gonna open this layer uh, in Quantum GIS now. How do we do that? Um, then we go to, there's two options. You can go uh, to this symbol called open data source. Uh, or if you have also a bar similar to this one, you can click this add raster layer. But if you don't see this on your screen, no worries. You can go to this open data source manager uh, button. And once you are there, you, you, you can see that you can upload different types of, of data formats. And then the format that we're gonna open now is raster. So here it should be raster. And then I'm gonna explore and browse where I have this, this data. If you already have it in, in a specific folder, then you should go there. Uh, but then I have it in downloads and this is the layer that I downloaded. So I just double click that file and then uh, click on add, add selected layers to map. And then you can already close this layer. And then this is uh, what you'll see uh, in your screen. It's a, it's a map, let's say, a layer that has uh, temperature values from all the world. And uh, the next thing we're gonna do is it's really difficult to, to grasp and visualize this, this temperature. In this case, it's a black and white layer in this case where uh, really dark colors show cold areas, but we're gonna change these colors so that it's easier to interpret or perhaps uh, it's, it's more friendly, let's say. And how we do that to change the colors of this layer of uh, temperature, we're gonna um, right click on this layer and then we're gonna go uh, and select properties. And after we have these properties uh, uh, window, then uh, we go, there's, here is a panel, vertical panel with different uh, options. Then we go to symbology. Now it's there. And then uh, here in this render type, there's uh, uh, different op options of how we can represent this. And we're gonna select single band pseudo color. And then we can change this, this color ramp. We can change these uh, colors that are more, uh, uh, according to the values, we can select different options. So we're gonna uh, go to here, um, to this color ramp. And then we're gonna keep this uh, ramp that exists here, which is called the spectral. This is the one that it's already there but I'm gonna change the order of the colors. Now it's showing small uh, values. In this case, it's temperature, like low temperatures as red, but I want it to be the opposite. So what I do is again, I click here and I uh, click on invert color ramp. And then I just inverted this, this uh, range of colors. And then what I do after is click apply and then I just select OK. So now we can uh, visualize um, the whole world in more uh, interpretable colors. But you can choose any, any option that you find in that uh, color ramp options. You could put different, different uh, options that you are interested or you like. You can explore that perhaps a little bit later. Next, uh, what, what we are going to do is uh, learn how to zoom in, zoom out a little bit from here. And the options for doing that are uh, here. So if you see this plus and minus, if you click that, if you keep on pressing the, the, the mouse, you can select an area and then you can zoom in. Or also you can just 
uh, click each time and it will go uh, more zoom and more zoom. Or you can go uh, zoom out and you click the minus and you also click and then you can zoom out. A way of centering back again this layer. You see that now it's in a little bit in the corner. You right click on the layer here and then you go zoom to layer. Then it will just display again in the center. So that's uh, one way of zooming in, zooming out. And this other uh, pan, little hand there, it's to, if you keep on pressing, you can move also a little bit like this. You can move whatever you want. Depending on, on what type of mouse you have, you can also zoom in, zoom out, uh, displaying or scrolling your, your fingers in the, in the, if it's a tap in your laptop or according to the mouse. Well, that's uh, some practicalities, but you, you can see, um, visualize this with these tools here up there. And then we automatically see uh, the range of values of temperature here. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's multiplied by, 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 hand, by 10, sorry. So here, it doesn't mean that it's a temperature of 336, but the mean average temperature is 33.6 if it's that color. We can reclassify these values, but we're not gonna go into details on how to change that. But the idea of this part of the course, it was just to visualize this uh, layer. In this case, is climate and its average mean uh, temperature. Then what we're gonna do is, uh, we just saw how to input the environmental layers, but we, we can also download species occurrences. And to do that, uh, you need to <clears throat> uh, go in this main menu here. Uh, there should be an option called um, plugins. So if you go to plugins, then you go to manage and install plugins. Then if you get an error, I guess it's, it's something with my computer, but you should uh, get a window like this in your, in your screen. Then we're gonna uh, download, the, the good thing about this quantum GIS is there's different tools that you can download for different sort of analysis. And this, this is called a plugin. And then we're gonna uh, search for this quantum, uh, sorry, this global biodiversity information uh, plugin. And we just search GBIF here. And you should see it here. In this case, I have already installed it. But once you click on it, here where you see reinstall plugin, you should be seeing install plugin. So you just click uh, install plugin, and then you just, you just close, close that window. And then somewhere in your, in your project, in your screen, you should be able to see a symbol, which is uh, kind of like a, a leaf, a green leaf. And uh, so this is the icon that we should search for, and this is the one that we're gonna use for downloading um, data from species occurrences. So we're gonna click on that uh, icon, and then you'll see uh, a window that has uh, different boxes there. What this, um, Thing, this window, you can see different options of, of uh, species that you want to download here. For instance, in the scientific name, you can put the name of the species that you want. Uh, then in this uh, basis of record, uh, remember that in Hannah's uh, part of the course, you are seeing that there's different uh, uh, platforms where you can download, and this is one, quant uh, sorry, Global Biodiversity Information Facility. But within this platform, there's a different source of data available. It could be data from museums, but it could also be uh, data from uh, iNaturalist, for, for example. If I have this uh, application, I could take a picture of a, of a plant and then upload it in this platform, and then uh, someone could identify that one, and, and if it's verified in this iNaturalist, it, it also goes to this GBIF. 
So he's here in basis of record, we can choose different options or, or different types of data that are there. It could be, for instance, an observation. If it would be, if it's human observation, for instance, here, like iNaturalist, or it could be uh, a preserved specimen. If this specimen was collected and deposited in, in, in a museum, natural science museum or in a herbarium or so on. This is the basis of record. So you can even access fossilized specimens if there are some existing data of those. Then country, you can limit and download these species occurrences or the locations of these species by country if you are interested in doing so. Then you can also uh, put some time limit here. If you want to download data between certain years, you can also uh, do it there. So the, the species that we're gonna now in this part of the practical uh, include is Cantarelli, this mushroom that we were talking at the beginning. And uh, we're gonna put certain parameters here. So we're gonna put the scientific name of the species, which is Cantarellus sibarius. I think it's correct. And then the basis of record in this particular case, there's lots of data and it, it might take a while. So we're gonna filter this a little bit and we're gonna only select preserved specimens. It's a way of selecting these options. It's a way of also having more uh, uh, accuracy on the data. And then in countries, we're gonna uh, keep it like all. And then uh, for this part, it's, that's it. So we're just gonna click on load occurrences. And this might take a while. Uh, it's downloaded, uh, it, it found 2000, more than 2000 uh, points. So it's downloading all that information from, from this global biodiversity information facility. Um, so now it has downloaded all the data that GDIF has. And um, you see this in, in those points. So those are the coordinates of these uh, places where it has that species. So it's quite practical to visualize um, these, these, um, these kind of, using these kind of tools. Uh, it, might, it might take a while in case you're downloading lots of lots of occurrences. So you can uh, remember to be patient in, in this case. But do you see something odd? from these places, uh, these occurrences. Something that perhaps uh, that doesn't make any sense. At least we know that, that uh, Cantarellus grows in, in, in different parts of the world. For instance, in North America, there's also, it's also growing. But I'm not sure if it's the same species. And, but we know that, for instance, in, in Finland, it's certainly there. So we can also zoom in. Uh, to the Finnish region and we see in different parts of Norway, Finland, uh, uh, Sweden also and part of, of, of Russia also. And we see all the places where there's occurrences. But there are some points if you, if you go back, uh, there's places even like in Africa, one point that might be, might be an island or it even might be in the middle of the sea. Uh, some places in, 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 in Amazonia, there is perhaps a, uh, genera of the species, uh, same genera, a mushroom there, but it's not the same. So there's quite a lot of odd values. So this is the data that exists. So we, we should be able to know a little bit more on, on potential problems of this data. One way of assessing this is, uh, it's not just the coordinates that, that we're seeing there. We can access all the information, all the metadata from each point. And to do that, uh, we can, go to the, click on, on the layer here, right click, and then uh, select the option open attribute table. And by doing this, it, it might take a while, but it's all the information, all the metadata of each uh, point location. As you see, it's a table that is extremely long. You have some, some data set key, so each, uh, if it comes from certain institution, it might have a, a key specific for that. 
where this data came from, if it was published in certain countries, so there's the, uh, the, the publishing country, then there's basis of record, that is, in this case, we only selected preserved specimens, remember, but you can also select all and you, you would have here also human observations, for instance, data from eye naturalist. And you can also scroll and, and, and move even further with this table that is extensive, it's quite, quite, quite big. Uh, something that we could already see, uh, you see also the country, oops, sorry. You can see, where was I? Yeah, the country where, where that specimen was or that individual was recorded. Uh, you can see if there's information about the locality and municipality. We can see just the picture of the, like the main picture, nothing that is downloaded right now. Ah, you don't see the table then? No, we don't. All right, thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Let's go back to sharing screen. How about now? Yeah, now we can see the yes. table. Great, thanks for letting me know. Uh, so is the, you see uh, a table with lots of information, lots of data, it's metadata of metadata here. So you have the scientific names, you have uh, taxonomic information, uh, then you have also the coordinates, as you see here, decimal longitude and decimal latitude. You have the, the year where this was collected, if, if there is information, you also have the month and the day where this was collected. So you can go really detailed on the data and this is a way of also controlling, filtering for potential uh, inaccuracies. There should be also uh, one column. Oh, uh, let's see related to georeferencing issues. Let's see, it's, it's quite extensive um, data. Yes, yeah, there is a colon issues. Perhaps I already passed it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. If someone sees it before, <laughs> let me know. Um, Ah, issues, sorry, yes. So here you can also see information, some information whether the coordinate was, uh, the precision of the coordinate, whether it was, uh, if it was 35.5 or it was more, if it was according to the decimals. So you can see more, a little bit more information about uh, some issues that this uh, coordinate might have. And there, there should be also one other column uh, where it's about, the actual accuracy of the of the coordinate but let's see if i find it now if i if it takes a while then uh then we'll skip this part now but there's lots of lots of data that you could ah he, i found it but it disappeared i'm gonna find it occurrence rewards Georeference protocol, higher geography, no. All right, there's one that you say here, you see coordinate uncertainty, bingo here. So you can see and you can filter if, uh, this is in meters, uh, just in case. So you can see if the error of each plot is within meters or if the error is within, if it doesn't have any information or not. So you can see that there are some records that have lots of, of, of uncertainty. So remember when we were discussing these papers before, uh, you can filter this data and only focus on the records that have lower accuracy. So that's a, a, a simple way of, of taking into consideration this. And I'm gonna just uh, scroll down and see all of these have thousand uh, meters of or less inaccuracy. So I'm just gonna select all of those uh, values so that you see 
how much of this data is actually uh, more accurate, especially, let's say. All right, oops. It's quite a lot of data, so that's why it, it takes a while. So let's keep it to 500. And this is, this is just for you to visualize. You don't need to do the same exercise necessarily. But then you see those now uh, yellow plots are the ones of all of those available points that have uh, lower or let's say higher accuracy in terms of, uh, of spatial, yeah, spatial accuracy. So as you can see, this is a way of taking into account. We can't see any yellow plots. All right, let's reshare again. Okay, now, then you see the, the yellow uh, points are the ones that have 500 error, special error or, or, or less. So this is a way uh, of taking into account this uh, accuracy in the data. If you're modeling this using broad scale, perhaps 500 meters is fine. But if you're doing more local, perhaps it's too much. But just that, that you can see that you can, all of that data available, they are not all uh, uh, perhaps useful for your objectives and, and, and you can filter this information according to what you're interested at. So this was the kind of like the first uh, part of the, of the practical. I'm gonna stop sharing this first part and I'm gonna then convert it so it's available for you and I'll go back uh, to the second part of the, of the demo. All right, so that was uh, the first part of, of, of the practical. Um, it was just uh, how, how you can download data and visualize it in one software. There's many other options to do this. Particularly, I like uh, this quantum GIS because you can also download the species data directly there. So it's a nice, nice platform for interacting both, uh, both information. Um, if you have some questions now, you can ask, but we can also uh, go back to the other practical if you want. Hello? Maybe we can go to the other practical and then if you have some questions when I start working, we can ask. Maybe. All right, okay, good to know. <laughs> 